Alright, uh, so that covers basically everything there is to know about Robocop's normals and strings and throws and wake-up attacks and all that basic information. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump right on into his special moves, alright? Um, so these loadouts that I built are purely to demonstrate all of his special moves. These aren't loadouts I would actually use. So we'll cover his loadouts here in a bit. Right now we're just looking at each move kind of in a vacuum, right? So his basic gunshot is called Straight Auto 9. And it's a pretty standard projectile. The issue is that you see how high that hitbox is. Like, Robocop is a big body character, and I'm basically shooting Terminator in the chin, right? So this will go over so much stuff. Like, it's a very easy attack to avoid. So as far as projectiles go, it is fast, but it's just not great. You've got a little mix-up potential. When you amplify it, now there's three bullets. But so what, right? So uh, not a great... Uh, move on its own. I will say you can get some effects similar to, to Flamethrower if we uh, come in here. So like, you know, Flamethrower, its whole thing, and we'll cover it here in a minute, is that it leaves your opponent standing and deals some good damage, right? Well, that does as well. It doesn't do as much damage as Flamethrower, and mid-screen it's much less useful. But you see here in the corner, if you end with it, I'm dealing almost 13% damage. And it's leaving me plus eight, which is plenty of time to hit with a forward three or a command grab or whatever. Or yeah, I don't have command grab in this variation, but you get the idea, right? So that's your basic gunshot. You're almost always going to be replacing this with low auto nine. Come here in a second. But yeah, <laughs> so basic gunshot. We got high auto nine here, which uh, is a, a very solid anti. It's very quick at 10 frames. The trajectory is a little steep. But this is where you're going to get almost all of your damage, uh, whether it's mid-screen or in the corner. You know, mid-screen. We got that. Oh, I don't have my command grab to cancel into. In the corner, you've got... Well, I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to end with. Oh, it's, <laughs> uh, whatever. Um, but you see how, you know... Standing four into upshot, right? Or high auto nine is the official name for it. So that's really, uh, it's a really important move for Robocop. There is a, another move that will replace it. You don't want to replace high auto nine. This is, you're using it for damage, even in combos. Like, you know, if I want to send him full screen, of course. Here we go. Oh, half flamethrower. All right. Um, So, you know, pretend that was a missile or, or whatever that's going to send them full screen, right? Uh, or you could end in your up auto nine. And see, now I'm plus 36. I have 36 hit advantage, and I'm right next to him. There are even some characters that their up uh, twos won't catch you. So if you come in and you end with your high auto nine, you can actually get a little crossover into jump into whatever you want, which can be really uh, easy way to open someone up, right? So... Just really solid, really solid move. All right, next we got Cobra Assault Cannon, which is kind of your default back forward two if you don't take the arm cannon, which replaces it. So uh, Cobra Cannon is kind of a weird uh, attack. So it doesn't actually have a bullet. It just has a, uh, a hitbox. So the startup is 30, but when it fires, nothing travels across the screen it's just it's almost like ray casting in a uh, first person shooter like if if terminator is where the bullet should be then he's gonna get hit um i don't know it, it, it behaves a little different differently you know see we got a bullet traveling across here it doesn't it just behaves a little differently you can see the damage is nice at 10 percent or you know 100 damage uh but it doesn't have a great aerial hitbox so it's pretty easy to jump over uh yeah, I don't know. It's just it's it's not my favorite move Robocop has by a long shot. You gotta do see a ton of Robocop players use it just because they don't want to take the alternative, which is the uh, the arm missiles that we'll be covering here in a second. All right. Uh, if you amplify it, you do get those extra hits, but oops. you see, if they block the first hit and eat the second two, they only take almost six percent damage. For a bar, which is not great. So full thing hits, does pretty good damage. Partially hits, doesn't do great damage. Uh, the other issue with it is that if you're trying to do uh, combos with it, uh, the opponent can actually break 
after that first hit. In fact, let's just go ahead and make him do it. All right. And there's a lot of characters and situations that if they do break right there, they can get up and they can full combo punish you, right? So be careful throwing out your uh, Cobra Cannon. Honestly, I don't use this move uh, when I can avoid it because I like the arm cannon better. But yeah, so just a, a, a decent attack, mostly just because of how much damage it does, I would say. Um, it does have a KB. Rather than try to set up, I'm just going to do it. There we go. So if they whiff an attack right in your face and you punish it with the cannon, then you get that kind of decent crushing blow. You know, 27 damage. Sweet. Uh, but it is a 30 startup move, so it can be really tough to, uh, to time it correctly so that you get it out to punish something that they whiffed right in your face. Like, it's, it's pretty tough to get going. All right, moving right along to Riot Shield. I love the Riot Shield. Uh, it's probably the best parry in the game. The only problem with it is that if you take the Command Grab, which I love, um, it replaces the Riot Shield. So you can't have a parry and the Command Grab at once, but that's okay. It might be a little too powerful, I would say, because this parry is really solid. So you can see, if you just tap the button, down back two and just tap it, how quickly he pulls it out and puts it away. If you hold down back two, or if you hold on two, he'll hold it out for up to you know, about three seconds. Okay. Uh, it will completely uh, nullify projectile. So anything that hits the shield that's a projectile will just not exist anymore. Uh, if the opponent... I still have him set. Nope. Go. So if an opponent hits it with a physical attack, not a projectile, but a physical attack, it'll get parried. And you can meter burn it. Oh. To deal a little more damage, 16%, and send them full screen, right? And as far as that crushing blow goes, that's just if you parry a wake-up attack. So if I knock Terminator down... <laughs> I don't have my command grab, come on. All right, you get a knockdown, and you come up and you parry, and they wake up into it, and they get crushing blowed, right? So that's about all there is to parry. Um, it's a pretty good string to throw out, or a pretty good move to throw out in cancels, just because your opponent doesn't know, or in staggers, you know, if they're trying to poke after that, they're going to get tagged, right? And it recovers so quickly... You really don't know how long the Robocop is going to hold it down for, right? And so it can really create some decent stagger pressure. Uh, the only big downside is that it won't parry low attacks or jumping attacks. So if you're someone, you know, fighting someone like Johnny Cage with a really good low starter, you're going to find it really limited. Okay, so really only good for characters that don't have good low starters. So moving right along to Air OCP Charge. So uh, this move is a it's a great move. I, I'm not going to lie. I see a lot of Robocops use it, and it adds a lot to his gameplay, especially when you have a uh, low shot, because you can feint by doing a hop, and are you going to land and shoot, or are you going to just instantly fly across the screen, right? So every time you hop, your opponent has to guess which way you're going to do it. Okay, so um, it does add that little bit of uh, gameplay to RoboCop's game plan, which is nice. Uh, it can also help you avoid projectiles. Like, RoboCop can actually get counter zoned by quite a few characters in this game. Um, so it can really help you jump over a projectile and take him out that way. It also, RoboCop doesn't have the strongest anti airs. He got his forward three, but otherwise just doesn't really have great control of the air. And so this fixes that. I mean, every time he's in the air, you know, you got to watch out for that. It's also totally safe. Minus seven, doesn't matter what um, height you're at, always minus seven. Right? Um, and with that pushback, I mean, you're completely safe. It is your opponent's turn. So every time they block it, for the most part, it's their turn, uh, depending on the, the matchup, I guess. Um, which is not great. That's one thing I don't like about it. So it does cover the air, but if your opponent blocks it, well, now you're right up against them 
and it's their turn, that's not where you want to be as RoboCop, right? So your your defense is just not good. You don't have a solid flawless block. You don't have anything going for you defensively when you're up close like that, really, except for your 10 frame mid. So that's why I don't really like this move. But again, I've seen plenty of RoboCop players use it very effectively, um, especially like, you know, if you're against someone, like it's a good way to get out of the corner. If you're fighting Kotal, you can kind of like troll him by making it so he can't catch you. Right, so it does have some uses that way. Uh, I will say it has very low priority, uh, which just means that like if this move is coming out and another move is coming out and they connect, RoboCop is gonna lose 100% of the time. I have not found a trade in this game that Air Charge wins. Literally, if I if if Terminator throws out a well-timed standing one while I'm coming at him, it will beat Air Charge. It loses to everything. Um, and that's the other reason I just don't like it, is it'll lose to dive kicks, it'll lose to down twos, it'll lose to projectiles, it'll lose, which of course it should lose to projectiles, but it, it'll lose to everything, right? So very low priority, uh, which is probably the biggest reason why I've just stopped taking it. You know, like I was trying to use it against Devora and her J1, which is beating it out every single time. Not even trading, but just straight up beating it out. So, you know, limited use. Uh, it does have the crushing blow, and it's an armor breaker, but Robocop's combos, like, I don't... <laughs> Maybe after a down two crushing blow, you could jump up and try to use it as an armor breaker, but really, I don't, it's not worth it. All right, so moving on, a flamethrower. Now, surely you have seen this move in action, right? So this really turns his one, two, one game and his four, three, two games to much more damaging options. So you can see if I don't have flamethrower and I'm playing like my typical command grab variation, I get something like that in command grab, right? So that's eight, eight percent damage into command grab. But with flamethrower, now it's twenty percent damage, and even though I'm a little further away, I'm plus seventeen, right? Instead of plus eight. So they have to respect my follow up because they got that ten frame forward three. I got my back two. I got command grab. Like it just the the flamethrower puts you in that situation where now it's just a complete guess right and so you can do all that same stuff without flamethrower that's what I like flamethrower I don't think adjusts any of Robocop's matchups very heavily because it doesn't let him really do anything that he can't already do so I can already stagger my opponent over and over and over if I want Flamethrower just makes that exact same game plan do a bit more damage. And it is significant damage, but it is just more damage, right? Um, I will say that it's a little easier with a naked 1-2-1 one, one to avoid flawless block punishes because you have more frames to work with. So you can delay the timing a bit more to make it harder to flawless block. With Flamethrower, that's not really the case. you got 17 frames and an 8 frame startup, right? So you do have 9 frames to work with uh, to vary it. Uh, but it's a little tougher to do, right? So with Flamethrower, you are going to do more damage, but you're going to get Flawless Block Punished more often, okay? Um, I will say it is a mid-hitting move. Um, so that does open up things like... Uh, down one flamethrower. And I think there's a tiny gap there. Someone that's very fast could uh, could poke you out of it. But it does, it enhances your down one game that way because it does give you a mid-hitting projectile to cancel into. It's a little faster than low shot, I believe. Um, and then same with down three and two flamethrower can be really good as well. Now, both versions are unsafe on block, but if you have meter, you can just not cancel it on block and a minus 19 but he's expecting that right so i do that and block and don't get punished right so it's actually it's surprisingly uh surprisingly safe don't get too crazy with it but it can be a little hard for some characters to punish um but yeah that's really all there is to flamethrower it's a, a phenomenal choice if you want to add it to your loadout uh but just know that it doesn't it just enhances what you're already doing it's not really going to change your game plan too much All right, so moving on along to Electric Shield. Um, this is a an odd an odd move. I will say it's gotten better because Robocop has more health now. But basically, uh, let's come in here. All right. Oops. All 
All right. So you see here, as long as I have that shield active, when Terminator is punching me, he's taking five damage every single time I block an attack, regardless of what he's doing, right? So if I block the attack, he's taking five damage. See, doesn't matter. Special, normal, whatever. If I'm blocking and he's hitting me, he takes five damage from that attack. If I'm not blocking and he hits me, just come oops, back over here. Oh. <laughs> so he takes twice, he takes 10% per hit. It's still less than I'm taking, but you get the idea. So usually if I'm blocking, he's taking more than I am. even if it's just a little bit more. But if I'm getting hit, he's still taking damage, but I'm taking more, right? So it's not the greatest move in the game by any means, but combined with Robocop's increased health, it can actually be pretty good, especially against characters like Jackie and some of these like really heavy staggy, <laughs> staggy, stagger characters that are just gonna be, you, you, you have no choice but to sit there and just hold block for 10 seconds at a time while they're, you, you don't know when you can press a button. Well, when you're in that situation, that entire time, as long as you, you know, got this going, um, they're taking damage as well. So they're not really getting anywhere. And since you have more health than they do, all are, uh, you know, because you're 1100, uh, it's actually a significant amount of damage they're taking just from attacking you, right? So it can be a really good way to close out rounds, especially like if you have a life lead and you use this intelligently, it can be literally impossible for your opponent to win the match, okay? I don't know if it's worth replacing. I don't think it's worth replacing any of his other uh, tools that I'll go over in his loadouts. Uh, but in some matchups, this could be kind of a, a good like hype choice you know if i see if i saw someone in a tournament using electric shield successfully i would lose my mind right so uh pretty it's a cool move just not totally useful all right and so finally we've got or not finally just for this loadout here we got these uh shoulder cannons which are just these bombs here um it's a really solid projectile i like it a lot the only problem is that it doesn't have a hitbox in the air. You can see how it goes through Terminator there. So it only has a hitbox on the ground. And it does, it's a pretty significant, well, wow, I'm surprised. <laughs> I was literally about to say it's a significant hitbox, but actually no. Uh, but it does 9% damage when it hits, which is really great for a, uh, a projectile in this game. 9% is really well, uh, is really good. The only big problem is that if Robocop takes damage, Uh, come on, Terminator. There we go. <laughs> Terminate me. So here I'm doing standing one in the bomb, and you can see that the bomb is coming out, but because Robocop gets hit, the bomb actually loses its hitbox. So even though there's that, there's that little explosion on the ground, it's not missing Terminator. It literally just does no longer have... It, ca it can't hurt him, right? So it can't win trades. It can't do anything like that. So you have to be really careful zoning with it because it's really easy to beat it out. All right, and it doesn't have that aerial hitbox. Uh, what's really good about it is the uh, block advantage. All right, so there we go, plus one on block, only minus two from right there. So if you are, if your opponent isn't reacting correctly and they're letting you cancel into bombs and blocking it, that's great for you uh, and it keeps you safe, but there's not a lot of opponents that are gonna let you do that, right? Um, the other thing about it is if we amplify it, at least this normal version, come on, we get this little mine, all right? And it's not the most useful uh, move in the game by any means, but it is like, if, you, if you're if you looking for a, a reason to spend meter, it can help your uh, zoning game. So just throw it out there, your opponent kind of has to deal with it, right? Especially like if you got your opponent in the corner, you can kind of trap them there with the mine. Uh, it's only active for a very short time. Right, but it's still enough to get your stuff going. Uh, the hitbox isn't huge. If they're like jumping, it can hit jumping people. Um, but usually, you're kind of throwing it out there as a as a distraction and not necessarily to hit with it. Right. 
All right, so moving right along, um, now we're up to active and reactive patrol, which are these uh, these specials right here. Where if you hold it down, you will walk forward, and if it is reactive, you'll walk backwards. Right. So uh, this is a terrible, 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 terrible move. Never equip this move. I've never seen a Robocop use it successfully, because basically what you do is a you don't have your low auto nine, right? So you don't have that mid hitting projectile, which is fine. Great. But now, you've also lost your high shot, the one that shoots diagonally upward, right? That you use for all your combo damage. So, I've sacrificed all of my combo potential and anti-air to get a 6% 24 startup high projectile. Like, that is awful, right? And you can hold it, sure. We like... Great, it's not even very fast. Like, your opponent can stand up, let you release it, and then duck back down, right? So that's not great. You can use it kind of like flamethrower, because you know it's gonna keep you plus nine, and I'm right against my opponent, right? So that's pretty good. And you can also, you know, you can get space that way. So now I'm almost full screen. So that's pretty good. But because it is that high attack, it's very easily punished if your opponent. If they're blocking that, they can low poke, they could down two punish you, they could do all kinds of things, right? So you do have a cancel, but the, every single cancel with this is unsafe. And again, because it's a high, um, as soon as your opponent, I don't know why it's not coming out, there we go. Um, as soon as your opponent sees you go for it, they know they can low poke. They just, they're gonna low poke, right? So the cancels are fake, the zoning is awful, and you lose all of your combo damage. So don't take active or reactive patrol, at least until they tweak it to make it worthwhile. Cause right now it's, it doesn't just not help Robocop. It is an active detriment to his game plan. This will make you play worse <laughs> than if you don't have it, right? So never take active or reactive patrol. All right, we already covered Cobra Assault Cannon, so moving on to my favorite move, the Terminal Strip. Man, this move just completely changes everything about Robocop, right? So uh, it is a command grab, but what makes it so insane is it's a mid-hitting command grab. So for instance, if I come down here and I set myself to duck, or I set uh, Terminator duck, and I try to grab, it's going to whiff, right? But not if I command grab. The command grab will hit. All right, and so like Terminator has a command grab as well, but his isn't mid. So even his command grab, his normal grab will whiff and his command grab will whiff, right? But not Robocop. So mid hitting command grab is insane. It's just so good, okay? And it's very fast with 11 frame startup. Like Kotal has the mid hitting command grab too, but his is a little slow. This 11 frame startup is amazing, okay? So just having the command grab equipped makes people play worse against you all right again just ha you don't you, you don't even have to use it just having the command grab will make you do better right because people get so afraid of it they get so afraid of getting opened up by that and you know 16 percent when you amplify it is significant you can hold down the amplify to uh carry them into the corner Right? It's kind of a good troll move, too. Like if someone's even making you mad, you can kind of like use that instead of a fatality. Right? <laughs> um, so it's just excellent. It, uh, the range is a little stubby, but you can combine it with your forward dash. So now every time I come in, my opponent doesn't know, you know, maybe I'm going to come in with that, maybe I'm going to come in with that, or maybe I'm going to come in with that. It's just a total guess, and they just have to deal with it, right? The other crazy thing about it is it turns your down four and your down, or your, sorry, your down one and your down three into legit terrifying buttons. And why is that? Well, look at that hit advantage. That hit advantage is 14. So every time I hit with that, now my opponent has to guess. Am I going to do that? Am I going to do another down one maybe? Or a forward three two in my mid? Or even a back two if I think they're going to jump, right? And there goes my hand. I don't have my combo damage because I have that stupid move. All right. So... Command grab, oh, it's it's so good for Robocop just because again he doesn't really have mix-up options other than like trying to trying to do that mess and use normal throws, right? So without mix-up options it can be really tough to open up your opponent. But as soon as you hit him a few times with the command grab, people start releasing block. They just they stop blocking Robocop and it's crazy, right? 
So command grab is so good. It's also, it's got a couple of ticks. So if you're not familiar with the tick throw, that's just the ability to cancel into a, uh, a command throw, right? So first up, we've got his down one tick. So if your opponent blocks the down one, the throw will hit. There's, the, there's no way to beat it except to jump. So after every down one, even on block, it's a, it's a guessing game, right? So the down one tick is really good. It won't connect from full range like you just saw. But as long as you're up against your opponent, you're good, okay? So um, down three is the same. This one you have to be more careful of because the, the range is so good on it. You want to make sure you're close enough for the command grab to tick. But there you go. So that is a legit tick right there. There's no way to avoid it. Um, let's see. And the way that you can do that really easily. So the, in the input for his command grab is forward, down, back. And if you try to do like down one, forward, down, back. See, I don't know how you're getting my down one to come out. See, I can kind of do it, but it's a little tough. The best way to do it is almost to think of the down one as like, it, it, its own move with its own input. All right. So instead of pressing down one, forward, down, back is two separate things. I would press forward, down one. All right. So look at my inputs. I'm pressing forward, down one, and that gets me the down one. And then I just press back and two. So I'm pressing forward, forward, bring that to down one and then pressing back two. So basically I'm doing the full forward, down, back motion. I'm just pressing down one when I get to the down part, right? And then the same thing applies to the down three. Just press forward, down three, back two. You know, almost like it's its own magic input for doing a tick throw. Forward, down three, back two, and you'll get it every time. It's very, very easy. Um, so his other tick throws aren't true tick throws. They're they're very close. They're all they're very close. But see, the difference is, if I come over here and I set set Terminator reversal. All right. Oops. And I do down one tick throw. See how that catches his reversal? Okay, and then same with down three, should do it as well. Well, kind of a trade, because he has a six frame down one. It's coming out on the first frame, but that's okay. But you see, so both of those work, right? So he, Robocop has other tick throws, it is not as secure as those, okay? And so what do I mean? Well, if we come over here, let's go ahead and reset Robocop. And if I set him to block mode all, so he's just standing there, right? He only blocks, he's like a Jedi. He's only gonna press block as soon as an attack comes in and he's gonna release it, right? So he's, he's not someone who's just standing there holding block, he's legit, he's just standing there and when an attack comes, he blocks it and then he stops blocking, right? So, I've got him set like that. If I do standing one into command grab, it whiffs. There is no tick throw there. If I do one, two, one into command grab, it whiffs. There is no tick throw there, right? So let's go ahead and switch that up. Instead of just all block where he's just standing there, let's go ahead and switch into stance hold. So now he is holding block, he's just actively holding it. Let's see if those tick throws work now. Hey, standing one works. One, two, one works. Great. All right. So the problem is that, well, let's go. Uh, there we go. You see how he is poking out of those, right? So one and one, two, one are tick throws. They will tick, but they'll lose to anything the opponent does. So if the opponent is just holding block, then they'll tick throw and they, they're very powerful. Most people block after that standing one, right? Let's keep them on stance hold, right? Because they don't want to eat your one, two, one. Again, this is your, your most valuable strings. It's so hit confirmable. It's so staggerable, spammable. Just everything about it is great, right? So you train people to expect that and they're going to hold block. So that makes that very difficult to react to, right? And then same with that. Um, so most people, are going to be holding block, uh, but just know that if they if they do make that read, if they just decide to you know roll the dice and see what happens if I mash buttons afterwards, then they will beat your command grab after standing one and after one two one. All right, um, but but yeah. So again, the the command grab. I'm spending a lot of time on it because it's so important for RoboCop. It is just it's an amazing move. Uh, and of course, the other thing about it too is that it lets you side switch. So it's a really good way to get out of the corner, right? Uh, when you, I am walking someone into the corner, you have a few options. So let's say I'm like right here and I grab someone. Oh, come on. 
So right here. So I could fully walk him into the corner and now I'm plus 18 and I'm right here against him, which is great. But I know Terminator's got some pretty solid wake ups. Like I don't necessarily want to be uh, right next to him with him in the corner. I want him in the corner, but I don't necessarily want to be right next to him, right? So in matchups like that, where you don't want to be right up in the opponent's face, you can still walk him to the corner and just release it a little bit early. All right, so now I'm I'm back here. I'm not right up in his face. I could avoid his up three wake up if I wanted to, but I can kind of bully him that way, right? So yeah, just the command grab. It, it's a much better special than active and reactive patrol. All right, uh, so moving right along. Let's take a look at his Chevel Trap, or Chevel Trap, however you pronounce it. So it changes his shoulder bombs. Now he no longer shoots out bombs. He shoots out this little spike spike trap right um and this is a really popular move i see a ton of robocop players use this move i don't get it i personally uh i don't i don't know why i like the regular bombs i like the mine uh and i don't like spending a slot when i don't need to right and so this move you can see at least on a spike trap that does unblockable damage he's just sitting there taking damage but look how low that damage is gosh that's <laughs> five five damage roughly per second uh, I'm pressing the wrong thing here. All right, so look at that. Like, that's nothing. You can sit on that, and you're fine. Like, you, you know, Aaron Black, Collector, Jackie, these characters that can put down these, like, fire traps on the ground, right, that hurt you, they do enough damage to where you don't want to be on there. You want to try to wake up, roll. You want to try to jump. You want to try to do something so you're not eating that all that unblockable damage, right? Well, Robocop, that damage is so low. Then I'm just I'm not worried about it. You know, I'll if I need to, I'll sit here on the spikes and eat it while I wait for the Robocop to make a mistake, right? So A, it's really not good at doing what it's supposed to do, I don't think, which is make your opponent make mistakes. There's just not enough damage there to do that. And then B, while it's out, you completely use access to that special. Like I just can't do it anymore. I can use the amplified version, which is a gas bomb. But yeah, uh, it is safe. Like it's a you know fairly fast move to get out and it can kind of you know be used in some like pressure like that but again just the damage is so minimal that i don't think it's significant all right the amplified version does send out this little gas bomb which uh if it hits an opponent like let's say uh, i do like i'm not even sure what will connect come on there we go. So if it hits an airborne opponent, you'll get a plus four restand. Usually plus four uh, is what you're going to get. Uh, I didn't use the grenades. I'm having trouble thinking of any combos. That would work. But yeah, so there you go. So now I'm plus eight right next to him and did 18%, right? So you basically get a standing reset for a bar. Uh, it's not, you know, that's not bad, but still, I just don't think it's really worth a move slot. If it doesn't hit them directly, come on, you get this little gas canister, which will put them in that kind of uh, state. So you, you can set up unblockables with that. But again, look at that damage. That's 24%, which is actually pretty good for Robocop. I'm surprised he got that much off of there. Right? So it puts them into that like un unblockable state where they can't... You know, it's like Captain Cold and Injustice, if you ever played that. Like, they, the gas is unblockable, and if they stand in it long enough, then they enter that state, right? And you can hit them in that state, but it only lasts for a second. It's not like Sub-Zero Slide. Like, you don't have all day to get across the screen and get them. Like, you got to be ready for it. And the hitbox is so small on the cloud that it's pretty easy to avoid. Um, and the timer resets. So, like, if you lay it down and they leave the cloud and then come back into it, it doesn't keep ticking right so it's really tough to actually lock people in the gas cloud so overall it's not a terrible move i just i think he's got uh better options all right so here we go the infamous low auto nine so this is the the move that you're going to see on basically every robocop build it's hands down his best attack and is what gives him really the full screen presence. So, you know, all of his other attacks, other than the uh, the bombs here, are highs. 
And so if your opponent has a life lead, you know, they can just kind of turtle up in the corner and you have to come to them. But as long as you have low auto nine, you got a mid threat range across the entire stage, right? So uh, it's just an excellent, very fast move. It's only 6% damage, so it does lose some trades. Uh, and there are some, like, uh, Sindel's low scream will go under it somehow. So there are some weird interactions that will just flat out beat it. But overall, it's just an incredible move. It adds to your footsie game, it adds to your zoning game, it adds to your rushdown game. It just it enhances everything about Robocop, right? It's just objectively better in every way than his default gunshot. <laughs> Except maybe the uh, default gun is better when you're trying to replicate flamethrower with like the standing resets. But even then, it's not a, a significant difference, right? So that's really about all there is to say about low shot, is you've got normal version, amplified version, and that's kind of the, the mix. If someone, if you have meter, you don't always want to burn it because your opponent is waiting for you to burn it, right? And so you can kind of keep your opponent mixed up that way to keep them from being able to jump in. They don't know whether they should block the one and dash in or continue to hold block waiting for the end, right? Um, if you don't amplify it it'll leave you plus four right but see because of that knockback it's a little hard to capitalize on especially if the person walks backward like a johnny cage or whatever so usually i would come back and continue zoning that way um and then it also it makes your down four game really scary because your opponent every time you down four your opponent doesn't know are you gonna cancel or are, you, are you just gonna do a down four are you going to do down four, cancel into one shot? Are you going to do down four, cancel into two shots? Are you going to do a down four into a command grab? Like, what are you going to do, right? So, low shot is just, it's so good. Uh, the other thing it does for you is your one, two, one, it gives you a mid ender, right? So if you don't have flamethrower and you don't have uh, low auto nine, then anytime you do one, two, one, your opponent knows that they can they can low poke. You, you literally do not have a move that will hit them if you cancel into it, right? So as long as you take either low shot or low, low auto nine or flamethrower, then you finally have a mid projectile or a mid special that they have to respect, right? And so then that opens you up. Now you can start doing one to one command grab. You can do one to one staggers, uh, all that good stuff, just because you have access to a mid hitting special. All right, and so really, there's not a whole lot left to say about low shot. It's just, yeah, it's just an excellent, excellent zoning tool. Um, and of course, you know, it is a lot like he lowers his hitbox, so it'll avoid high attacks. And if he does uh, duck under a high projectile and shoot you, you'll get a nice little 27% crushing blow as he shoots them in the crotch. All right, so excellent, excellent move. So arm crowd control cannon kind of does the same thing. You'd think it'd be a little redundant to have both of these, but see, the problem is that low shot is so low that it has no uh, aerial presence. You know, if you're against like a Fujin or a Sindel or some of these characters that are just in the air for days on at a time, uh, your low shot is going to be limited effectiveness for keeping them out, right? Luckily, the missile here is what's going to catch your aerial opponents, your jumping opponents, your bionic bounce jackies, your boing jokers. Fujin uh, catches Fujin so well. All right, so that's the whole point of this uh, missile here, the arm cannon. So this does replace your Cobra assault cannon, but you see, you know, it's still getting 9% damage. So it doesn't do 10, but it does 9. And that 9% is really important, okay? That's what lets you favorably trade with a lot of characters. Like, so low shot, it's surprising, but low shot isn't great for zoning out Shao Kahn, right? You can use it, but if Shao starts zoning you back with his spear, it'll trade, and his spear gets a knockdown, and low shot doesn't. So he's able to throw another spear that you have to block. So he basically gets two spears for every one of your low shots, right? So that's not a favorable trade. However, if you start using the missile, now you're dealing more damage than him. You're doing 9% and you're getting a knockdown. So you're able to trade favorably, right? Same thing for like Katana's low fan trades uh, very well with low shot. But if you time your missiles correctly, they'll catch her, even though you know her hitbox is lowered. Usually she stands up just enough to get tagged by the shot. And now she's taking nine damage to your six. So you're winning the war. And it'll also catch her if she tries to jump and go for her, uh, you know, <laughs> booty move, whatever that's called. I can't remember what it's called. 
but yeah so missiles is great for keeping people out of the air it's got a really nice hitbox it's a little inconsistent like sometimes you'll do it and it'll hit fujin and then sometimes you'll do it in the exact same spot and it won't hit him right so a little inconsistent but overall it's excellent for uh keeping people out of the air the other cool thing about it is if you meter burn it, you can hold it to kind of delay it, which honestly isn't great. I never, I very rarely use the delay uh, because if your opponent sees you doing that, they can just crouch and that's all there is to it, right? It'll, it'll fully whiff, right? But what you can do with the uh, meter burn rockets is, well, A, they do a lot more damage. So there's 15.2 and 18.7, right? A percent. Uh, so a little bit more damage. Uh, if you do try to cancel into it from a string, the timing is a little weird. You can't just like mash it out. You have to press the amplify as Robocop raises his arm. So like if I do it and I press amplify now, the amplify doesn't come out because I pressed it too early, right? So you have to time your amplify, but then you get a nice little uh, damage boost. The other thing about the amplify is plus seven on block, right? So that is dangerous because, uh, again, it's a high and it's like a high high, which means the opponent, uh, if they're crouching, even if they're crouch blocking, most characters will still avoid it. Uh, let's see, so stance hold. Right, see, so even crouch blocking, it completely whiffs. So do be careful there, but this is why it's good with the four, two, one string. Because that final hits an overhead. So most people are going to be standing up to block that hit. So you can do that, and now you're plus seven. As long as you don't mess up the uh, <laughs> uh, amplify. Right? So, that's a really easy way to trigger your forward 2 1 2 crushing blow. Because a lot of people don't seem to realize that this is plus seven. Oh, that's plus 13. You have to amplify it, right? So then that they they press buttons thinking you're minus whatever. And so then you come and you hit them with that forward 212 and get the punish and that triggers your KB, right? So that's a nice little gimmick you can use. You can even you can also back off that way. So again, a lot of people think that they're going to punish you. They think you're minus 13 from that. So they think you're going to punish, but you're actually plus 7 and fully in control, right? So that's the other thing. It only really works off forward one two or four two one because again it is a very high attack. So you need the opponent to be stand blocking because even if even if they're holding block, if they're crouching, it'll whiff. They have to be stand blocking, which makes it dangerous. But yeah, just realize that, that is an option, especially in the corner. It's like look at that knockback, but now they still have to guess. You're gonna do that. You're gonna do low shot. You have all these kind of options at your disposal, right? So I love the arm crowd control cannon. It's just a fantastic move. Yeah, that's about all there is to that. All right, and the uh, only other special move that we haven't looked at so far is upgraded, which is his move that alters his shoulder cannon. All right, so we already looked. Uh, he has that other version, the shovel trap, however it's pronounced, where he can do gas bombs that can uh, create some like reset type situations, right? Well, this kind of does the same. Basically, now my shoulder cannon, instead of launching that mine, it blows up it launches this like electric stunning move right and if they hit with that then you basically get a free launcher and it keeps them in that state for way longer than the gas does it's like the gas doesn't really last long whatsoever but this does right 28 percent off that's pretty pretty decent from a, a move like that right um so this is a a pretty solid move it it, it only helps with your meter burned shoulder cannon but hey still like if you can land that it's just free damage right so there you go that's all there is to that move uh, overall i still i think he's got better options I, I don't know if i could ever fit that move into one of his loadouts but hey it's, it's not not too terrible okay and really the only other thing to talk about with robocop is his as far as special moves go is his fatal blow all right, and as you can see, it's you know not the fastest at 19 frames. You're not jack flying across the screen instantly, um, and the the range is pretty poor. Uh, like you really gotta be, you know, within that like almost to down four range, right? Um, now the because Robocop is such a big body character, 
he can catch jumping people really easily. Like this is it, <laughs> maybe his, probably his best anti-air, I guess. Um, but yeah, like it'll catch people constantly. And uh, if you're comboing, like most combo enders, you can uh, end with three two into fatal blow. So you can do like there you go. A little 42% combo there. Um, and yeah, I mean, really, that's all there is to his uh, fatal blow. Let's see. You know, you got minus 24, uh, but with pushback, it's pretty safe. Uh, it's it's a little difficult to, for some characters to punish, right? Oh, come on. There, so like, look at that pushback, at least from max range. If I'm right up next to him, I believe it's a little... No, that's about about as safe, yeah. See, so yeah, overall, it's not a terrible crushing blow or a fatal blow. It's just very, very standard. Like everything else with RoboCop, it's kind of very middle of the road.